year did you open the clinic, Boxing Gym, and what inspired you to do so? So the gym was 2014. Um, I worked as a corporate lawyer before. When I left my job, my intention was just to promote. I was also training people, and then kind of went naturally hand in hand. I always wanted to transition into the pro game, so I thought it kind of ties the loop. You know, if I'm managing boxers, promoting to have a gym as well. So it's something from a young age I'd wanted to do. So that was it, really, you know. It's just the opportunity presented itself and went for it. If I did my degree, then I was in legal practice for almost five years. That in itself, you know, there's a lot of transferable skills there, like the contractual side of things, the kind of commercial sense and, and, and everything else, you know. So, yeah, there's a lot of transferable skills. So I found it useful for definite, you know. So as a promoter, so I, I always build myself first and foremost as a manager. So I've got a large stable of boxers that I manage and the promotions are ancillary to that. It took me a while to kind of get my head around that, even um, the fact that I promote shows but it's mainly to get my boxers work, to build them up, and then you look to move them on to larger promoters thereafter. But as a promoter, the job is, as the name suggests, promote the show, selling the tickets, marketing of it. But there's, a, it's, there's so many moving parts, that even for this upcoming event, um, we discussed it off camera, Calvin McCord pulling out. So you're building an event, you've got your main event guy who's selling 500 tickets when we still got limited capacities, even outdoors. And then all of a sudden, he hurts his hand week and a half out and he pulls out so it's it, it's really challenging i'll be can't i'll be perfectly honest with you having not promoted for 18 months and then to go into this and then for that to happen it's not for me more than when i was in my stride i would have kind of used a boxing especially taking it on the chin a lot more but i'm really in many ways finding my feet because it's the first show i've done with all the covid protocols in place i've not done it for 18 months so just little things that i'm used to booking and having booked all the time i'm having to go and start again and people have not spoken to very much in the last 18 months like my dj and things like that so it, it does knock you off you know you've, you've got a plan and now it's been turned on its head i've added two fights in its place but it still doesn't make up for the main event so i've not promoted since march 20. It's been a huge blow, so the, the, the model's changed, but luckily I've got the gym, I've got the management side, and I've got the promotions to look at my, my, my boxing business. So it's been quite handy because the gym since it reopened has been really, really busy. And on the management side, I've managed to keep boxers active as well. And during the lockdown period, I've kind of formed relationships in South Africa. So that's been useful. I had one promotion over there, and now I'm managing a stable of boxers in South Africa. So. Like we spoke about off camera yourself, going on a different route by virtue of the challenges presented by COVID, I've done the same. So I think that it's been damaging in some respects because obviously I've been at a standstill for 18 months, but I've managed to enhance the business by kind of looking at other avenues. In some ways, it's been a bit of a level playing field because everyone's been inactive outside of the, you know, the marquee kind of fighters, the ones that are with Matchroom and BT. So it's a bit of a level playing field, but in, in my personal opinion, is really differentiated the, the boxers as to those that really want it and those that don't. So the ones that I've got that are really hungry, take two for example, that Calvin was to be on the show, Calvin McCord, Dean Sutherland, they've improved through lockdown, they've worked relentlessly, and as have a lot of the boxers in my stable, others, you know, kind of have drifted away from the sport, some won't ever box again, so it's really been a key time. So for boxers late in their career, it's been very detrimental because the practice missed out on title fights and earning opportunities and so on and so forth. But for young fighters, it's been an opportunity just to get in the gym and make progress. Taking for food and people didn't realise this stuff. It's just, uh, they just think, oh, you'll do your training and you'll go home to the, your family. That boys are all for Ireland. They're, they're sitting in a hotel room themselves for the next few days. I mean, then they'll go back home, then come back maybe again in a few weeks. They'll see her two weeks ago. So, oh, fight time. Mm. Win world champion. I've got a full time job. Then at night time, almost every night you're in the gym with the fighters. Um, during a camp, you're away travelling, sparring. You're within a Manchester, she uh, Sheffield, um, Glasgow. You're, you're, we're, especially when you're in Aberdeen, you've kind of got to travel. That's near the quality. Although, saying that, over the last couple of years, we've noticed because of the quality we've got in the gym now, that people are now more willing to come and travel here for the sparring. Instead of, it always used to be, even for Matthew and Lee was, was fighting Glasgow Central Belt, maybe Edinburgh. But can I feel what we've been doing is working because now we're finding we're getting the phone calls. Can we come over and spar? Can we come up to your gym and be able to spar me X, Y, or Z? So it kind of shows that we're doing the right thing as well. But a year and a bit ago, we've got Andrew Usher involved for our sports science. 
and he's been amazing for, for the guys with everything. You know, just making sure they're not overtraining, they're eating properly, they're not, they're not doing stupid stuff. So he's been a big part of what's happened. And I mean, it's always good. Just this weekend, we've got um, Edward Donovan and Jason Hart who are for Ireland looking at, uh, well, they've signed uh, terms with us in a management deal. Now, two or three, four years ago, we would never have had anybody coming for Ireland to, to come out and sign. So we must be doing something right before people are going to see, speak to people, other managers in, in England and, and, and further afield. They had offers in America and Canada and they came over here and seen us and thought, no, we like a setup, we like you. Can, they know what we're in it for the right reasons, we're in it for money. It's, it's just about the box and the boxes for us. And I just want to win titles with them, get as far as they can go. You feeling confident about next weekend, David? Aye, definitely aye. The boys have had a good hard comp, so it's now just getting the rest of the weight off and then you're ready to rock and roll. The boys have trained hard off through Covid for us. How's that been the last sort of year and a half for you? Tough. Tough. It's my life to come in the gym, work, and then I come here five, six days a week in the gym with the boys, and then going to watch boxing shows and, and sparring days. And the hair aren't taken away for this 18 months been pretty a big change for me. So I enjoyed a wee bit at the start, but now I'm just waiting to get back started again and, and get on the road and get the boys winning. So. So I'm uh, from Cove Bay, uh, just on the outskirts of uh, Aberdeen. Everything that I've ever done has always been here, and all the dreams and aspirations that I've had uh, competing definitely in the box aspect of it is obviously to perform in the biggest venues in your hometown. So for me, it would be Pitodri or the new Taka Stadium. So that's why I think just something close to your roots is uh, really, really important for me. How would you describe the people of Aberdeen? Uh, very sportive. Uh, I, we don't have a lot of success, uh, especially in the sporting side of things. The football team isn't the, the best, as you can, as you probably know. But uh, I definitely think once there's a local talent that everybody can see is doing well, everybody does get right behind it. <laughs> So the first one is I actually started Taekwondo when I was three because I wanted to be the Blue Power Ranger. That was that was the one I wanted to be, the Blue Power Ranger, and that was it. Uh, and then moved into kickboxing, and just as I was getting a little bit older, I started looking at much more boxing, watching it on TV, uh, looking back at old videos, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr., then watching Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Oscar De La Hoya and just fell in love with it, uh, just about like 15, 16, and then decided once I'd achieved everything I did and kept boxing, I was going to give the professional boxing a go, and I'm obviously delighted that I did. that you sort of look up to or look towards and sort of inspire you? Oh, well, definitely just now you would have to say Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor has obviously reached that pinfall of what anybody wants to do. Uh, I think you can just grab much more attention from that because it's somebody that's local. It's, it's almost like somebody's done the impossible so it's not impossible anymore. Uh, it's much, much more achievable than what you might think. I want to push myself to the absolute limit. I want, that's the only reason I come into the boxing gym every day and I push hard for each fight is I want to test myself. I, I love the competitive nature between me and one other person that's training as hard as I possibly can for the exact same thing. It's the same person comes in, they've got two arms, you've got one head, you've got one heart, and who wants it more basically? And I think that's what drives me. But realistically, uh, I think probably any British fighter coming into the sport would say the British title, that, that's something I'd love to have, although you want all the big WBC belts and all that and the world glories, but if I win or when I win the British title, I think that would be a massive, massive achievement for me. I've got 
time on my side that European and onto world honours is, is achievable. Um, who are you fighting? How do you see it going? It's a 10 and 1 Mexican. Uh, I think he's 23 or 24 coming over for it. Really, really hungry. I think he's been active as well. I think he's had four fights in the last year. Uh, so it's a really good step up for myself, fighting for the WBO Youth World title as well. But it just puts us that extra cherry on top. And I think having somebody, especially a Mexican, the amount of talent that they've produced, and obviously recently with the upsets that they've caused as well, I think it just puts more respect to my name once I win this fight. So, what's your day job then? Uh, so I'm actually a full-time electrician. Uh, so I'm there 40 hours a week is my contract. Uh, to be fair, in Aberdeen it's quite good just now. The jobs that I've been doing, it's a lot of like, oil company building refurbs. So it's nice central most of the time in Aberdeen. Uh, keeps me busy, but it's definitely not what I want to be doing for the rest of my life. Stuart, I'm a super uh, barn weight and I am 10 and 0. I'm from a, a small fishing village called uh, McDuff. What inspired you to start boxing? Uh, I think it was just I like fighting, I like hurting people. Uh, I don't mind taking a shot either, but like, just I feel I get a satisfaction of throwing punches and hurting people, really. Did you find that that was from a, a young age? Yeah, but I did. I, I think I got my hooked and I was like I was sparring when I was younger. And I was, Hitting a lot of kids, obviously, and then I think I thought, yeah, some loving this is brilliant. And then I just took off it there. I was quite good at the gymnastics and I was average at football, but boxing was where I like, excelled the most. So. Do you feel like attributes from gymnastics has helped you in boxing? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it gave me the, like the flexibility and like the strength for boxing. So I would actually recommend doing gymnastics. Scottish fighters right now. Probably Josh Taylor, just because he's undisputed, isn't he? So he's got, a, he's got the titles. But that's, that's what I want to be, up to that level, and hopefully that's where I'm going. So. Does it feel more achievable now because someone locally has been able to do it? Yeah, definitely. If Josh can do it, and well, I can do it. Everybody's human, isn't they? have got two arms, two legs. I, I believe I've got the the drive to date, so what do I can do. Where do you think that drive comes from? I don't know, I think it's just because I want to be the best really. I mean, like, have I you always been competitive that yeah, way? I want to be the best, I want to have the nicest things and just be the top dog really. But David, David doesn't like seeing me going in and just swinging and throwing big bombs but it happens isn't it? And people like, people like to see it so. What's your favourite cheat meal after a fight? Anything. 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 I've got, uh, I couldn't tell you honestly, I've got a listless long of things I want to do. Eat. Do you find yourself thinking about food a lot uh, when you're... Right now I'm... Uh, uh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, but I think it's just... It's, I think if you ask anybody that's involved with cutting, like a sport that's got to involve weight, the food's always the worst, but the training, everybody can do the training, everything like that, but diet. it's the diet. It's I've obviously uh, got everything planned out just for this next week that we go down on Thursday to get COVID testing and stuff like that down at the hotel. So yeah, okay. it's literally, I've made sure I'm off work all this week, not seeing anybody, just got my training to go to and literally solitude for the next next week, make yeah. sure the weight and everything comes down and just relax as much as possible. Yeah, and that's, that's the idea. That's very good. You look very slim. I'm, I'm, fe I'm feeling very well, really good. Everyone compared that's coming here, they're like my children. Yeah. <laughs> you know how many men I had to help to dress up for a body <laughs> roller treatment? And I'm not joking. It's like reality. Yeah. I'm like, just put them in. No, it doesn't go on. And I'm like, okay. So, all right. Minus 124. Yeah. What would you say are the sort of the main benefits for Skin, fighters having trauma, um, weight loss, um, energy boost, 
muscle arthritis, muscle. anything about muscle. How was it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Refresher was how, how, how does it make you feel after you, you have it? Just, you feel like you can get a full, fresh breath of air, which is massive. Obviously, you can f still feel the freezing cold all over your skin, but you feel just refreshing, like wide awake. It's like a double espresso in, in three minutes, basically. But so in an hour's time, do you feel like, do you notice a difference? Oh, definitely. And that's what I've been coming in. Uh, some mornings uh or working on certain on just my ankle or just doing a full body but see after having a hard hard week doing one of them really boost done straight away for the next day it feels like you've got fresh battery put back into you uh, i feel like a, a full duracell bunny again <laughs> that's the stuff but no it feels great and especially if i have a full body uh which is major because everybody there's a lot of places just got the facilities just for where the head stays out but like what we spoke about before, you miss massively on the breathing aspect of it, which is something that is completely different when you're in that sort of depth. You can see, as soon as you breathe out, it's freezing instantly in front of you, but you just get that full, clear out, fresh from your nose. Everything's crystal, crystal clear as you go through, so now you feel fantastic straight after.